Okay, you know that uh, uh, customized corneal surface ablation has been proven to regularize the cornea surface and minimize the corneal higher order ablation, especially in cases of irregular corneas in early keratoconus. The aim is to improve the visual quality, and we can do it either topography guided or wavefront guided. I'm not here to argue with it, which is better, the topography guided or wavefront guided or you have to do it sequential or simultaneously, but this is not what I'm going to talk about. Here, it's not advanced, it's not moving, yeah. So the idea here is just to do the epithelial PTK around 50 micros or 55 micros with the laser beam. Then we can do the topography guided stromal abrasion, maybe around 5.5 optical zone to regularize the cornea and improve the visual quality for the patients. But we have to forget, not to forget that the epithelium is not of uniform thickness. The normal corneal epithelium, I found a paper in 1993 that the normal corneal epithelium and the normal cornea is not uniform. As you know that the epithelium is thinner in the center and thicker in the periphery for the normal cornea, and this causes optical effect and change in the refraction of the cornea of the patient. It seems that the epithelium tends to flatten the anterior surface of the stroma and minimize the power of the cornea. And this difference between the central part of the stroma and the periphery uh, of the stroma uh, with or without the epithelium is around one diopter. Sometimes it's reached up to 1.8 diopters difference, but in average it's one diopter. So this is for normal corneas. And we know that the epithelium is slightly thicker in the lower in the, compared to the superior parts of the cornea and slightly thick, uh, uh, thinner in the nasal part compared to the temporal part. But here, as you can see here, thicker in the nasal part compared to the temporal. But in cases of keratoconus, as you can see here, it actually assumes a donut shape, and I'm pretty sure that you are aware of this, and we have thin epithelium in the center and thick epithelium around, and the difference sometimes reach up to 15 microns, which is equivalent around to one diopter of difference in the refraction between the central part of the cornea and the mid-corneal uh, uh, zones. So here, sometimes in other cases of keratoconus, as you can see, there is markedly irregular epithelium, and you can see that the difference even goes up between the central part of the cornea and the mid periphery part of the cornea that the difference in the corneal epithelium may be reach up to 30 uh, microns, which is significant in terms of refraction or the optical power. So with the MS-39, we can take a clear view on the epithelial thickness because of the high resolution, which is the tissue resolution up to 3.6 microns, and then we can study the cases of the keratoconus, especially early case of keratoconus with the MS-39. What I saw here, that we use the uh, tangential, for example, the, anterior, the data from the anterior surface of the cornea, including the epithelium, and trying to regularize the stroma, assuming that the epithelium is of uniform thickness. But actually, this is not the case. The epithelium is not of uniform thickness, especially in cases of irregular corneas like early keratoconus. So I think here, as you can see, this is the stromal elevation and anterior elevation on the MS-39. The anterior elevation includes the epithelium and stromal elevation after deducting the epithelium. And you can see it looks somehow like the same, but actually there is not the same. There is a difference in the numbers and difference in the location of the elevations and the depressions as well. So let's see this example. This is a case of early keratoconus, and you can see again, this is the, uh, uh, the epithelium here. I'm not sure if this, the laser pointer is working. The epithelium, as you can see, that the epithelium is thinner in the center and thicker in the periphery, and the difference is around 10, uh, 10 microns. So here, if you are going to do the PTK 55 microns before the topography guided PRK, actually we are ablating the central part of the epithelium first, and after 50 microns or 55 microns, we still have an annulus of untreated epithelium. There is still an annulus of epithelium covering the stroma. And our target is to regularize the anterior surface of the stroma. So if we apply the topography guided, not PTK, the topography guided now on this surface of the stroma, which is still there, some annulus of epithelium still there, we are missing the stromal surface. 
So we need here to address this annulus of epithelium before applying the topography guided PRK. So as you can see here, what I mean, some other machines advocated that we can reverse the process. We can do the stromal ablation first, and then we can do the epithelial ablation later on to try to counteract this effect in, in, in the, uh, of the epithelium on the cases of early keratoconus. But again, there is difference in the stromal ablation and the epithelial ablation with the laser. It's actually may, the epithelium ablates higher, at a higher rate, about around 20% compared to the stroma. And again, the epithelium is not of uniform thickness. The laser platform trying to compensate at least partially for this difference in the ablation, but again, we don't have to forget that this, still the epithelium is not of uniform thickness in, early case, in cases of early keratoconus. So what I believe in this case, we can alternatively, we can ablate the whole epithelium so we can calculate the thickest part or measure the thickest part of the epithelium in the ablation zone and trying to remove the whole epithelium, the whole epithelium trying to print the irregularities of the anterior surface on the anterior stroma to copy these irregularities. Then we can apply the topography guided PRK in this case. So here, as you can see, what I mean that just to copy these irregularities on the anterior stromal surface. So as you can see in this case, this is the case of early keratoconus. And here again with the MS39, you can see that the epithelial thickness assumes the donut shape, still not advancing. Okay, yes. And instead of limiting the PTK to 55 microns, I added another 15 microns because of, to cover the whole areas of thickened epithelium. So this is 55 microns and added, and again, 15 microns up to 70 microns based on the MS39, the epithelial thickness map. So now I have removed the whole epithelial thickness. The whole epithelium has been removed. Then we can apply the topography guided laser on the pure stromal surface. And this way we can get better results for visual quality and rehabilitation for our patients with, topogra with the topography guided PRK or whatever wavefront guided PRK in, in cases of early keratoconus. So let's see this case. Okay, this is a, a case of early keratoconus. And I don't have, I do just, have, I do have the wave light. Here, as you can see, I just, without any correction, there is no correction for the higher order abrasions, but I, instead of correcting the cylinder, I don't do correct the cylinder because the cylinder is low order abrasion, so we can address this with the ICL, fake IOLs, whatever, just glasses, for example. I just added minus one and a half sphere because we need to compensate for the induced myopic ablation. This is hypropic ablation that will induce myopia because of the annulus of the epithelial thickness, the donut shape. After removing this annulus epithelial thickness uh, surrounding the cone of the, the keratoconus, we are inducing myopia. So I'm trying just to compensate for this myopia. And let's see here, the, the optic zone is 6.5, not 5.5, because I'm targeting to improve the visual quality for those patients. And what about the stromal, the ablation thickness, or the, the, the thickness here? just the, the ablation depth is 36 microns only because I don't need, didn't include any cylinder or any other low ablations for the uh, low order ablations for the ablation here. So let's see. Uh, this is a nice function with the MS39 just to study the visual quality based on the aberrations of the cornea. And this is the patient un, uh, uh, uncorrected distant visual acuity. This looks like uncorrected distant visual acuity preoperatively. And if we can add some corrections of the low order abrasions, you can see that there is improvement in the visual quality, but still the letters look somehow hazy. Two months after this ab uh, topography guided ab uh, ablations, after removing the whole epithelium and improving the visual quality of the patients and enlarging the optic zone, you can see that the visual quality of this patient has been improved tremendously. Still, we have to put some cylinder, as you can see, 2.25 
for the uh, cylinder and some sphere, but this is not my target to correct low order abrasions, but just to correct the higher order abrasions and improve the visual quality for the patients. This is another case of uh, early keratoconus, and again, this is again, there is no uh, uh, corrections for the low order abrasions. Maybe we can add some minus one to compensate for this induced myopic shift after the topography guided PRK, enlarged the optic soon, and you can see this is the visual quality before, and this is before again with correction, with the correction of the low order abrasion. Again, as you can see, you can appreciate that the letters uh, look so much hazy, and this is again, sorry. Yeah, this is uh, two months after the procedure. And of course, we can appreciate improvement in the coma, the vertical, as well as the horizontal coma after the topography. We, done, we have done just uh, for 34 eyes of this, of 20 patients with this approach. There is improvement in the best corrected visual acuity, improvement in the vertical coma, as well as the horizontal coma. Stress ratio and total ocular coma has been improved as well. So I believe that there is some modified protocol here instead of PTK limited to 55 microns, we can increase the PTK based on the epithelial maps of MS39. We can enlarge the optic zone instead of 5.5 to maybe 6.5 to cover more areas and improve the visual quality, especially at night. There is no need to correct cylinder as described before, just leave the cylinder as it is. We can correct it later on and we can do some partial spherical correction, not to correct the sphere, but just to compensate for the induced myopic shift during the laser ablation. So here, this is my conclusion here. The epithelium plays a vital role in corneal surface ablation and the role of epithelium is more complex even in cases of early keratoconus and irregular cornea. Topography guided surface ablation and the anterior somar surface after complete ablation of the epithelium in my hands uh, provided better results. I've just discussing, was discussing this with my colleague in Morocco and he asked for something called epithelial guided topography. Epithelial, not topography, not wavefront guided. We need something like epithelial guided PRK. So hopefully we can someday have something to compensate for the irregularities of the epithelium during surface ablation of the cornea. Thank you very much.